Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to tell you some of the best and the most effective ideas from the book No BS Wealth Attraction by Dan Kennedy. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a really good happy medium between two sort of uh, facets of thought, two sort of philosophies when it comes to making money. There's, there's one on one side that's saying that you should... Uh, use the law of attraction and you should you should think about what you want and you should be positive uh, And on the other side, there's kind of the more hard-nosed You should go out there and earn it and you should work all day and you should hustle constantly and uh, I think that there's there's merit in both of those sides right that both of those will help you towards your goal and if you can marry the two together uh, then you're going to have the most success. And I think this book did a really good job of expressing that, of expressing that that uh, center path to borrow an expression from the Buddhists. Now, the way that this book is organized, it's it's organized into uh, chapters that, that each go over one, what he calls a wealth magnet. Uh, each of these wealth magnets is a part of your character or your personality or, or your behavior or how you run your business that will bring bring wealth to you if you practice it. So I'm gonna go over some of the wealth magnets that I found particularly compelling. Wealth magnet number one is no guilt. He put this one at number one for a reason because this is a really, really big problem for a lot of us in Western society. We've grown up in a society uh, which frankly has been overrun by communist propaganda. And if that sounds like a bold claim, I invite you to uh, search YouTube for an interview with Yuri Bezimov. Yuri Bezimov was a KGB agent uh, from the Soviet Union whose job it was to influence the cultural institutions of foreign countries, of countries outside of the, at that time, Soviet Union. So they would infiltrate the media, they would infiltrate Hollywood, they would infiltrate our miseducation system. And this project has been extremely successful uh, even in those days. And nowadays we're seeing it being renewed because all of a sudden with this kind of globalism that's, that's uh, shaping the world, what we have is that China is emerging as this enormous market. And so all of the companies, all of the, the companies that are making movies and are ma making TV shows, um, they want to sell to the China market. And if they sell to the China market, they make millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, that they wouldn't have made otherwise. And so in order to be able to sell to the Chinese market, they have to be able to satisfy the, the Chinese government censors. The Chinese government is, is very, uh, very strict about censoring the material that Chinese people are allowed to watch. They're a communist government and they censor their, their material very heavily. And so what they're saying to these American companies and European companies, these Western companies, uh, is that you have to conform to our censorship guidelines or else we will not let you uh, show your material in China and you're going to be out a whole bunch of money. And there was a really, really excellent South Park episode called Banned in China where they kind of satirized this. I, I highly recommend going and watching that. But the, the point is that our culture is going to become completely subsumed by communist propaganda. And a big part of that is that we have become brainwashed to believe that making money is a bad thing that getting rich is a bad thing. We've been brainwashed to believe that if I make money, then it must be because I'm stealing it from someone else. That money is a zero sum game. If, if I get more money, that means that someone else gets less. That means there's a fixed pie and I'm taking a bigger piece, so everybody else gets less of the pie. Now, if you think about it rationally, obviously that doesn't make sense at all. Right? There are a million situations where, where two people can both benefit. There are a lot of win-win situations, and if you think about the whole history of the world, we're a heck of a lot richer than we were in the past. It's not because of, of we took money from someone. No, we, we created that wealth. Right? And most people realize that. I mean, if, if you're at this point where you actually care about, um, about creating wealth and you're watching the kind of videos like the ones that I'm putting out here, you probably are already aware of this. But even if you're aware of it, it it's probably still seeped into your subconscious. I mean, I heard the statistic recently that 
by the age of 18, the average American has watched, through television and movies, has watched 10,000 people be murdered by rich people, right? If you think about our culture, rich people are evil. And, and even, you know, in the, the Soviet propaganda, even middle class people are evil. And so even if you don't actually consciously believe that, chances are you have something buried in your subconscious that still thinks that way. And so the more that you can do to re-brainwash yourself, to get rid of that old programming and replace it with new programming that's more beneficial to you and your life and the world around you for that matter, uh, the more you can do that, the more successful you're gonna be. Because if you still have that subconscious belief that making money is evil and making money makes you a bad person, well, that's gonna sabotage you every step of the way, right? That, that's going to make it very, very difficult for you to do what it takes in order to make money if you still uh, in your deepest self believe that that's something that's evil. And that's part of the reason that I, I tell everybody I come across, stop watching TV, stop watching the news, stop watching Hollywood, stop watching even sports these days. Sports is full of, of communist propaganda. Video games is start are starting to become this way. Get, get, get yourself separated from all of this crappy propaganda that is ruining your chances in life. Right? I mean, people think that it's innocuous. Oh, it's just a TV show. It's not affecting my brain. It is affecting your brain, right? It is, is seeping into your subconscious mind and it's preventing you from getting the results that you want in your life. So you have to uh, override those pernicious subconscious beliefs. Okay, wealth magnet number five is no fear. It's incredible just how many opportunities uh, can be ruined because of fear. How many opportunities you will, you will never try how many um, good things you can have in your life that you're never even going to go for in the first place because you're afraid. This is something that's so common. It's common with everybody, including myself. I come from a background of being an extremely fearful person. I, was, I, I lived in fear constantly when I was growing up. I was always afraid of being judged, right? Everything was, was fear of rejection or fear of being judged, and it's completely paralyzing. And so... Um, he says no fear. I, I would um, modify that a little bit and say don't let fear hold you back, right? Because fear is something you can't really control, but you can feel your fear and, and do the thing anyway. And that's something that I, had to, uh, that I had to develop over the years that has served me extremely well. I realized that fear was absolutely ruining all of my chances in life. I remember a few years ago, uh, I, I found this quote on the internet. It said, uh, everything, everything you ever dreamed of is on the other side of fear. And so I printed out that quote and taped it to my front door. And so I, I lived my life for years just recognizing where I was afraid to do something and then doing it anyway. So if you can get over your fear, you're going to have so, 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 so many more opportunities than if you're left paralyzed by it. So it, it's going to be uncomfortable. You can accept that. But if you can get over your fear, then that's, it makes an enormous difference. And it's really interesting, he says in that, in that chapter, he says that uh, he studied a lot of famous people, a lot of, well, a lot of rich people, rather, and he found that there was one, one common theme that he found more than any other common theme in the world among people that were very rich. And that common theme, and this is really interesting, that common theme was that they had all gone through bankruptcy. Not what you were expecting, right? That's not what you were expecting for me to say. But it makes a lot of sense because, for one thing, in order to face that situation where you go through bankruptcy, you got to really put yourself out there, right? you got to be willing to take risks. You, you have to be willing to take financial risks. And then uh, the point that he made was that if you go through bankruptcy you've kind of already experienced the worst thing that can happen to you financially. I mean, uh, speaking as an American, right, where we are so incredibly spoiled. <laughs> well, blessed, I should say blessed. We're so blessed that the, the downside, the worst thing that could happen to us is that we go through bankruptcy. And, and what happens if you go through bankruptcy? Well, not very much. I mean, in the olden days, if you went through bankruptcy, they'd, they'd throw you in prison. And you wouldn't be allowed out of prison until you could pay your debts. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore. Now, if you go through bankruptcy and you can't pay your debts, what happens? Oh, it hurts your credit score. 
It makes it a little bit more difficult to buy a more to get a mortgage. You know, like the the stakes are so small now. And so the people that have been through bankruptcy realize that it's just not the end of the world. Right? And so because they have they've experienced the worst. They've experienced the the worst thing that could happen to them financially. They know that it's it's really not that bad and so it completely frees them. Right? It it frees them to try anything and everything. It frees them to take risks because now they're not afraid anymore. They've seen the worst that could happen and it's nothing. It's just not really something to be afraid of. So if you can get past your fear, and obviously I don't recommend driving yourself to bankruptcy. It's something that you should avoid if you can. But uh, if you can get rid of your fear that something bad is going to happen, then you will be so, your mind will be so much more open to do what it takes to uh, grab the opportunities that are, that are surrounding you at every time of every day. Okay, wealth magnet number eight is be somebody. And when he says be somebody, he means be somebody recognizable. Uh, create a, a name for yourself. Create a following for yourself. Be a celebrity, basically. But you don't have to be a celebrity like Kim Kardashian. You don't have to be a, a celebrity like Tom Cruise. You know, it doesn't have to be somebody that everybody recognizes. You don't have to be a household name. But if you can make your celebrity, make yourself a, a well-known figure in, in just one tiny little space, then that's enough. So, for example, uh, a new thing that I'm doing is I am helping people who are Excel entrepreneurs, people who are freelancers who help businesses with their spreadsheets, I am helping them with their marketing. And so, I, I am positioning myself as the expert in marketing for Excel consultants. Now, that's a very tiny and very specialized space and the number of, of marketing experts in the Excel consultant space, as far as I know, is one. It's just me, right? So, so I'm able to position myself as an expert. I'm able to be somebody in that space very easily. And chances are, whatever you're doing, uh, whatever, whatever skills you have, whatever talents you have, you could probably position yourself is an expert in, in something very specialized like that and become recognized as an expert in that space with relatively little time and effort. Now, in order to do that, you're gonna have to do some content marketing, right? Again, this is what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm making, I'm putting myself out there, I'm being somebody. I, I am uh, putting myself out there as a public figure so that I'm somebody that people can recognize. And, and the YouTube is kind of a long-term play, and, and the way that I've done it is my, my channel is kind of general, right? You know if you follow me that my channel is all about helping people to be free, to be free physically, financially, mentally, and spiritually. And so that kind of covers a broad gamut, and so this is kind of a long-term play for me to become recognized in that space because it's kind of broad. But if you have a very specific space, you could create a YouTube channel, or you could create a blog, or some other kind of content marketing, which gets you recognized as the expert in that space pretty quickly. Now, wealth magnet number 10 is to do something. I mean, that might seem a little bit obvious, but a lot of people miss this, right? A lot of people spend a whole lot of time watching YouTube videos like this one, uh, reading books like the one that I'm talking about, reading content, and then, never actually doing anything with it. Like they're, they're always consuming content in order to get inspired, but then they're not really doing anything. And if you want something to happen, you, you kind of have to do something. That, that's a, a pretty important part of the equation. And again, like I'm, I'm into all this law of attraction stuff. I believe in that stuff. But if, if you're just sitting around meditating all the time and your visualizations never inspire you to go do something, then th it's just not gonna work. Right? I mean, at least I don't see any way that it would work. The, the point of the, this law of attraction stuff is that you have good ideas, right? The good ideas, the profitable ideas come into your head and then you go act on them. But if you don't act on them, then, then it's, it's useless, right? And there was a, a video I watched by Alex Becker a while ago, I thought it was really, really good, that, that treated this topic with a cool analogy. I'm gonna show you what uh, his analogy was. The way he described it is, think of a big flywheel. You know a flywheel, it's like a, like a heavy wheel that you, you start spinning and it spins slow and you keep pushing it, you keep pushing it, it spins faster and faster and faster. And then there's, there's a little thing over here 
that that's uh, picking up tickets. And think of this like a um, like a raffle ticket, right? The more raffle tickets you get, the the more likely you are to win the prize. And so you have this flywheel that every time it, it makes a rotation, it's taking one ticket. And so if you keep on pushing the flywheel, then it spins faster and faster and faster, and it picks up more and more and more tickets, and eventually you hit the winning ticket, right? But if you spin the flywheel once, and it's, it's spinning slowly, and then it comes to a stop, maybe you pick up one ticket, well, chances are that one ticket isn't going to be the winner, right? You might get lucky, but chances are that one ticket is not going to be the winner. So the, the more you spin the wheel, the faster you spin the wheel, the more tickets you pick up, uh, the more likely you are to be successful. And so that's what, what the action step means, right? That you are, you're constantly doing something, and the more that you do, the faster you're pushing this wheel, the more tickets you're picking up, and therefore the more likely you are to get one that hits it big. And, and you know, once you get one, it's, it gets easier to get more. And people who are completely ignorant of this like to sit in their little decaying armchair and, and criticize the successful entrepreneurs and say, oh, that, that person had, a, had 100 businesses and 98 of them failed, right? As if that's some sort of criticism. That's, that's the way it works with entrepreneurship. You put yourself out there 100 times, and if you get two wins, then, then you're living large. You're a happy camper. That's exactly how it works. You have to be willing to fail a lot more than you succeed, and your successes will, will cover all of those failures because the upside is so much bigger than the downside. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a quick favor, hit the thumbs up because it makes a YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button and hit the, the bell icon beside the subscribe button if you'd like to get my future videos all about how to be free, physically, financially, mentally, and spiritually. If you would like more freedom in your life, then definitely subscribe to my channel. Okay, now wealth magnet number 13 is integrity. And this one is super important. Integrity means that you're honest, that you deliver what you say you're gonna deliver, that you uh, do what you say you're gonna do, that you are reliable, that you're the person that anybody can rely on, that if you say that you'll be in a place, then you be in the place. If you say that you're gonna give them a thing, then you give them the thing, right? Always do that, always do what you say, and then you'll build up a reputation for being reliable. You'll be, build up a reputation for being trustworthy. And this is something that is just of enormous value, especially now in the, the internet age, where it's super easy. If you, like if you offer somebody something and, and they pay you for it, and then you deliver a crappy product, right? Or you, you half deliver, you don't deliver what you said you were gonna deliver, or you don't deliver on time, uh, then they can go, go ruin your reputation on the internet. They can tell people what happened and say this person is a scammer or this person isn't reliable uh, and then and, and you're going to be out of luck. Next time you try to sell someone else they're going to go search your name on Google and find all this bad stuff about you, right? And then if you have integrity it's going to be exactly the opposite. They're going to search your name in Google and they're going to find good things about you. So integrity is super important, and even if it isn't directly related like that, I firmly believe that uh, when you do right, then it comes back to you, and when you do wrong, it comes back to you. This is a law of the universe. It's something I've been discovering more and more lately, is that what's moral and what's practical are actually exactly the same. You know, Dan Kennedy starts this chapter by saying, that I'm not going to give you a lecture on morality. Right? When he's talking about integrity, he's coming from a completely practical uh, perspective. He's not talking about morality at all. And so I'm taking this one step further and saying that what is moral is always what is practical. If you do right, it is going to benefit you. 100% of the time, no exceptions. If you do what is wrong, it is always going to hurt you. 100% of the time, no exceptions. In the final accounting, I mean, you could get away with a crime today, uh, but you're not going to get away with it forever. It's going to come back to you eventually, and it's good. whatever benefit you got from it in the short term, it, the long-term detriment is going to be a lot greater. So if you have integrity, things will work out much better for you. This is a unchanging, immutable law of the universe. Okay, wealth magnet number 14 is ask. Just ask. If you want something, then ask for it. So many of us 
are afraid to ask for something because we don't want to feel like we're annoying or we don't want to feel like we're greedy. But so much can be gained just by asking for something and, and often the things that we think are so annoying are actually gratifying to the person. He, he mentions that uh, if you ask a successful person for advice, um, that person's not going to be annoyed by that. In fact, that person's going to be somewhat flattered, right? They, they like it when people ask for advice because uh, for one thing, you're validating their status. You're saying, you're essentially communicating to them, you are a person whose opinion I value. You're a person who is worth listening to. So don't be afraid to ask. I mean, the worst that anybody could ever say is no. And asking is something that, that can be hugely beneficial when you're an entrepreneur, when you're in business, right? Let's say that you, uh, you, you reach out to a, a YouTuber or a blogger or uh, somebody who, who runs a Facebook group and say, hey, I've got this cool product that your, your followers might be interested in. Uh, would you be willing to promote it to that person? And they could say no, in which case you're in exactly the situation that you were before. It's no sweat off your back. Or they could say yes, and that could absolutely explode your business. That could, that could change everything in your life. So, you know, Jesus says, ask and you shall receive, right? This is in the Bible. Don't be afraid to ask. If you ask, just, just that one factor of being willing to ask for what you want could absolutely change everything in your life. Okay, wealth magnet number 15 is to see what isn't there. This is really important if you want to be successful in business, to see what the need is that is not being filled. Or uh, is, he actually goes over some, some interesting ways that you can do this that you're not going to reinvent the wheel really, but you can, you can dress it up in a way, you can position it in a way that it's meeting a different need or it's meeting a different market. Right, so he, he gives a few different examples and I, I'm probably gonna forget what they are exactly, but uh, like you, you take an existing product and, and market it to a different market segment. Right, like he gives a, a example of a barber shop that he takes a, like a normal regular barber shop that, that nobody really cares about and he makes it fancy and upscale and, and adds this whole lifestyle movement around it and charges a whole lot for a, for a shave and a haircut. And so what he's doing is he's taking an existing service and focusing it towards a higher class market. Or another thing that he says is find an existing product, but push it through a different distribution channel, right? Like for example, the uh, QVC and the, the home shopping network when they started, there were all of these, there were a bunch of jewelry stores, right? And there were a bunch of stores that sold stuff, uh, but nobody was selling it on TV. So they just took the same stuff and they sold it through a different distribution channel. They sold it through the TV and they ended up making a ton of money doing it. So seeing what, what isn't there doesn't necessarily mean seeing a new product or having a new invention. It could be just a gap in the marketplace that there are, you know, maybe there's a particular product that's marketed towards uh, low price, towards poorer people. And the same product is a premium version marketed towards super rich people, but there's nothing in the middle, right? There's, there's none that's marketed at a moderate price towards middle-class people. So if you develop that ability to be able to see what isn't there, uh, that's something that's gonna be very helpful to you. And by the way, just my own input here, one of the best ways to do this is through doing that law of attraction stuff, right? That hippy dippy stuff that, you know, a lot of people don't wanna do. Well, what that does, what that law of attraction stuff does is it primes your mind to be open to those opportunities, right? It, it, it programs your reticular active activation system to notice those opportunities when they come up, right? It's just like if you've ever noticed when you get a car, let's say you, uh, you get a, a Toyota Camry um, for the first time, and then right after you get that car, you start to notice Toyota Camrys everywhere. Before you had a Toyota Camry, you never noticed them. They were always there, right? They were always there, but you didn't notice them because they weren't, uh, they weren't jumping out at you. Because you have this, this situation where there's these millions of details and millions of pieces of information all around you and your brain has to filter them. It has to figure out which ones are important, right? And, and so uh, how you program your brain such as by buying a new car will determine how that reticular act activation system works, will determine which details of your environment uh, your brain decides to label as important. 
Okay, now the next wealth magnet is marketing prowess. This is something that I have found in everything that I've tried to do, right? I, I just, if you don't know my story, um, I, I played in a band for a long time. Like that was the biggest thing I was trying to do in my life. I was trying to play in a band. And then I had a, a consulting business doing Excel. And I've had, I've had a few other little businesses um, in, in my life and most of them th were, were not really very successful. And so I, I finally came to this realization that my problem was that I just didn't know how to get customers. I didn't know how to market myself. And so I, I just dived into marketing, uh, dedicated myself full time to marketing. I'm like, okay, this is the, the missing piece. This is what's, what's going to change everything in my life. And so I, so I completely dedicated myself to learning marketing. And uh, this is what I found is that marketing applies to everything and it's just about the highest paid skill that you could have. It's funny, he actually talks about a, a situation where he was a marketing consultant for a corporate CEO and the, the CEO looked at his fee that he was paying him and, and realized, hey, you're, you know, I'm the CEO of the company and yet I'm paying you more than I'm getting paid. And that's, that's just the way of the world. Frankly, if you were the one who is able to bring in the customers, you were the one who is able to bring in the money for the company, whether that's your company, your own personal company, or it's somebody else's company, then you have the most valuable skill in the world. So if you learn marketing, it is absolutely worthwhile to you. And by the way, um, if you're interested in, in getting a really nice introduction, I will put a link to the uh, one funnel away challenge, which is kind of what gave me my start in marketing. I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that out. I, I highly recommend that for a really kind of intense uh, immersion into marketing. So I definitely recommend that you read this book because there's a lot of information in it that I was not able to go over in this video. So if you want to get the book, I'll put the link in the description as well. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you leave me a comment below, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all of my new content. And if you'd like to see another summary of a really cool book that I recommend, check out this video here.